Ever since I got into adventure riding, the Seth Moto 800MT has been high on my wish list. I've spent a lot of time on the marketplace trying to find a slightly used one to ride and to review for a longer term. But they seem to be pretty hard to come by. These bikes are incredibly popular, with owners holding on to them longer than other brands like BMW or KTM. And now, with Seth Moto bringing out the more off-road focused 800MTX in next year, my anticipation has only grown higher. Today, I finally had the chance to ride the 2024MT800 Explore version, the flagship model, on this rainy day at the Seth Moto Open event. So how did it handle? Let's find out. Starting with, the 800MT Explore has the full-size adventure bike presence. The shape of its 18-liter fuel tank creates a big, solid front end, giving me the feeling of myself sitting in the bike, not just on it. It's a nice touch for a longer distance touring ride. Despite the wet weather, the bike keeps me well protected from the wind, with minimum buffeting on my helmet and upper body. This is well appreciated in this type of weather as well. After a 30 minutes of riding, my arms were soaked, but my legs and chest stay surprisingly dry. The sitting position is comfortable with a seat height of 825mm, making it quite accessible for most riders without sacrificing ground clearance. I'm at 176 and I can flat foot both feet, which adds a lot of confidence, especially for more technical riding. The seat itself is wide and well cushioned, making it great for ride over an Nova. Features like handguards, an adjustable windscreen, heated grip, and a heated seat added extra comfort that is hard to overlook. The handling on the 800MT Explore is impressive. It's fitted with a 19-inch front and a 70-inch rear wheel, paired with adjustable KYD suspension. The suspension strikes a good balance for different rider weights, Although the stock setting leaned on the stiff side, I could definitely feel each bump on the road. But when cornering, the Explore feels surprisingly agile for its weight, with quick turn-in and responsive handling. I hope the 800MTX can keep the similar handling feedback, especially with its improved suspension. Although I understand the 21-inch front wheel might make the turning quite tricky. On this bike, the stock Michelin Anniki tubeless tires performs well on white pavement, giving me the grip and the confidence I need, even on a tight, slow turn. I can see this tire excelling even more in the off-road setting. Braking is powered by Juhuan calipers, providing a strong, controlled stopping power. This Explore model also including IMU, which monitors speed and lean angle to optimize braking and electronic interactions. Speaking of electronics, the Explore version finally lets you turn off ABS and traction control. This bike has six riding modes, in addition to the Sport and Ring, which I used for the most of the test ride, it offers two off-road modes and two all-terrain modes, one of which I believe disable all ABS and traction control. Another standout feature is the rearward radar. It monitors your surrounding and provides alerts for blind spots detection, line change assistance, and rear collision warning. The large, tablet-like dashboard in the front is quite impressive. 
This 8-inch screen offers easy-to-read information, map display, and phone connectivity. It even supports offline navigation, which means you can skip the actual GPS devices for the off-road trips. Now let's talk about the engine. The core of the experience, the bike uses KTM 799 parallel twin engine with a 285 degree fairing order, delivering 95 horsepower in total. This setup is plenty for both highway and third road riding, but I have a mixed feeling about it. The engine felt constrained at lower RPMs, especially in the city traffic. It's clear the bike won't go fast, and I want to go fast as well, but it was challenging to manage it in the urban environment. The twitchy throttle is quite noticeable around the 3000 RPM. Even when I kept the throttle steady, the engine was on and off on its own. This is likely due to the mapping, which is a common complaint. It's a bit disappointing that it hasn't been fully addressed in the Explore version. But once you rev the engine higher, the bike transformed. It feels eager perfect, and the quick shifter works smoothly. Sound-wise, I found it a bit too quiet at a lower RPM. Although the KTM engine sounds great overall, I'd prefer a bit more depth in the lower range, and maybe an aftermarket exhaust could add to that. Well, still, for the pure sound, I think 450MT does a slightly better job. All in all, the 800MT Explore is an outstanding adventure touring bike that packed with value. It comes standard with crash protection, a luggage rack, and all riding modes unlocked with no actual fee. Looking at you, Husqvarna, at under 17k Australian dollar, there's nothing else in this class that matches feature at this price. It actually have more tech than some of the European middleweight adventure bikes, which are much lower price tag. So, would I buy it? The answer is yes. I'm still quite interested of owning a 800MT, but maybe not the Explore version. I don't need all the advanced safety feature and the fancy tech. I do long distance riding with a fairly easy gravel road. So personally, I think the touring version might just be more than enough for me. Some might say the 270kg bike is too heavy for off-road riding, and I would agree to that. However, the weight already including the crash protection and the luggage rack. As a comparison, the 450MT has a wide weight of 195 kg, but adding an aftermarket crash bar and a luggage rack can easily bring it up to 215. Only a 15 kg difference between the two. And the 800MT offered double of the horsepower and a more comfort feature for longer ride. And if some day I decide to go deeper into off-roading, a more technical trail riding, the upcoming 800MTX could be the perfect fit. With a 21-inch front wheel, better suspension, and a lower fuel tank position for a lower center of gravity, and I think that's gonna be a popular hit for the Australian market. Thank you for joining me on this test ride. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more video like this. And I have more insight about the CF Moto that you might find interesting. The feeling is a little bit snappy. Um, around they are like, very snappy. Yeah, three yeah. to 
three to four thousand RPM. Yeah, yeah. And it feels like I'm constantly giving the throttle, but it, the bike is like going. I don't know. It might need a new map. Same as a bit snappy on three two. It's a little bit snatchy. Uh, yeah, there's there is new maps coming all the time. A lot of guys will change the gearing and go lower in the couple of teeth lower in the rear. So you bring up the RPM. Changes the RPM yeah. if you're going that slow all the time. Yeah. But most of them, you, well, people can will ride around by the high, ride in the high gear. Yep. Um, and it'll usually pull through that section. Do you reckon the Alfaro version, the X version, would that be similar price or more expensive? That'd be more expensive. Yeah, it, it'll have. The whole new, the new body work, the new look. We'll have uh, the 20 inch front wheel. We'll have a similar yeah. level of electronics, maybe a little bit more. I think the suspension, at the rear shock, yeah. I think it's going to be a bit, bit more upgrade. Yeah. Um, so, but it'll be more expensive. How much? I'm not sure. No. Is there going to be much change for the 2025 version? On this model, no, I think so. I think the only thing that we'll probably see, maybe, might be a bigger dash with more functionality in the dashboard. Okay. I think they're going to do more mirroring of your phone, so yeah. you'll be able to mirror maps onto that. Will that be a different color in it? Uh, yes, it'll probably probably be a different color. Yeah. Um, but they're not saying much about what what they're going to do. I don't think they're going to change too much at all. I think it's more more so going to be a few more features with the dash. Yeah. All right. Uh, so fifty. Uh, we're looking to do that in maybe a naked bike and an adventure bike. Yep. But we're still they're still working on that. It's still in embargo about that. We don't know much about it other than that motor. There's also a 900 twin um, that they're also working on. Um, so, yeah, bumping the 800 motor up even further, more, more power. We were reviewing it in 2019, five years ago. Yeah. We had four motorcycle models, and then we got 23. Yeah. And next year it'll be probably 30. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, the growth in the last yeah. two years particularly.